She-Hulk Episode 8, the show where miserable old dinosaurs try to breed. Oh, sorry, wrong IP. We start with previously on because this is the twist episode, and no, I don't mean that she's the slow. The big twist is that I've been right from the start. We had the guy that she met while swiping that turned out to be a client. We've got the guy she met at the wedding. We've got female lawyer of the year nominated by her male boss. And of course, the evil arch nemesis of the piece, toxic fandom otherwise known as Reddit. Went on a few dates and I thought it was going great. I haven't heard from him. I can't imagine why, love. And of course, the most obvious of baits, the person that told us the lesson of the entire show. Think of Josh. Everyone we meet, no matter how much they hurt you, it's a lesson learned. Everyone we meet, every man, no matter how much they hurt you, because men hurt you, is a lesson learned. The big twist is that every man is evil and will hurt you. Nobody saw that coming! The show's satire, everybody. It's not what the writers genuinely think, we promise. But we start with two guys stealing a TV. They get knocked over by a frog. And the joke is that, ha ha, he's crap. Yeah, he's a man, what did you expect? Imagine this guy saving people, isn't that funny? But you forgot about the guard frog. Maybe the French were right. Who wants to eat the legs? But of course, he tries to intercept them and misses. Ends up rolling on the floor because he's a moron. My name is Leapfrog, acting like I'm the guard frog. That doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, my name's Batman, but now I'm Godman. No. Who signed off on this script and why are we making merch for it? This particular instance. You announced yourself as a guard frog. But we jump to the present time. He's actually telling She-Hulk about it and she's amazed that he called himself God Frog. And let's be honest, that's a bit rich for a derivative character that's only hired because she was green and looks like she was made on a PS2. Quite frankly, I'm not sure you've got the moral high ground here, love. Yeah, wh but my name is Leapfrog. Congratulations, we're two minutes into a lawyer's show and I want both of you to go to prison. I think you've nailed your mark. Oh yes, the lawsuit, better explain that one. Right, so I was surrounded by these huge guys. At least he knows how to talk to Jen because that is a very frequent occurrence for it. So I was surrounded by these five guys and they'd all been drinking pineapple juice for the last 72 hours. Although I was outnumbered, I could tell that they were afraid of me. They were just intimidated by my massive. But after getting the crap beaten out of him by the two guys stealing a TV, he decides to activate his jet boots. Time to rip it and rip it! It's not just me that thinks that doesn't make sense, right? And I could Google it, but that's far more effort than the scriptwriters did, let's be honest. But he shoots off into the sky, there's a problem with his boots, and he plummets back to Earth before his suit goes up in flames. A 900 degree threshold is on fire. We should probably remember that one for the future, 900 degree threshold suit. Because look, I'm not saying they forget their own details of their own story in their own court case, but they do. I have third degree burns all over my legs. Don't show She-Hulk your legs, dude. We all know what She-Hulk's like. She might not be able to control herself. She walked past a fish and chip shop last week and now 17 bystanders are pregnant. You can't be showing her that red meat. I deserve justice. After watching this show for eight weeks, I feel like I deserve justice. But look, I don't think any of us are going to be that lucky. Come on, second season. And compensation for all of my pain. Now you're talking. Because until that point, I'm just going to have to console myself with other things. Like realizing one of the benefits of Matt Murdock being in this show is that he'll never actually have to suffer the pain of watching it. Mental anguish and stuff. Because when men sue over emotional damage, it's all fake. But when women do it, it's really meaningful and impactful. Oh, you shouldn't see me in that divorce. I definitely deserve half his fortune. 100%. But she says, look, your suit broke. I think you've got a case. This is manufacturer's defects. You definitely deserve compensation for your pain and tragedy. Strict liability and breach of warranty. Yeah! Woo! I'm sad and lonely. There is one small hiccup in her plan, though. What is the name of the manufacturer? Uh, Luke Jacobson. Yeah, that'd be her tailor, the one who made her super suit. And if you think that She-Hulk could remain professional and objective in the face of someone actually suing her tailor, then, uh, you've clearly not been watching the rest of the show, have you? He specializes in super suits. Oh, shit. Jacobson is the only tailor I can go to because of my unique physique. She means she's tall. Six foot seven, to be exact. No one has ever made clothes for a six foot seven person before. And somehow, during this surge of selfish entitlement, she thought it would be a great idea to go and talk to her boss about it. Seriously, it's amazing he hasn't thrown you out the window because at least you'd survive. Do you think maybe Pug could take this one? Why would he take it? You barely take any cases as it is. Mr. Patilio is one of our biggest clients. Okay, Pug should take it. Anything that is important or you want to get right is not something that Jen should be doing <laughs> if you want to practice left at the end of it. Eugene is also very excited to have Hulk on the case. That's because he's never met her or seen her in a courtroom. Of course he's 
he's going to lose. And they're willing to sign a conflict waiver. Isn't it strange how everyone's signing conflict waivers with her all the time? But I believe I would be ethically compromised. That would require you had any ethics. Because I like my nice clothes and I don't want to piss him off. And she just proved my point. I would be ethically compromised by my clothes. And this would prevent me from giving him the just and fair representation he deserves. She's essentially admitting that she would allow an innocent man to go to prison all because she likes some frilly undergarments. This is the hero of the piece that we're went to support. Empowerment! You've handled a client who had to sign a conflict waiver before. Yeah, there is a lot of those clients with conflict waivers, isn't there, now you mention it. Also, he's making me a dress for the gala. Seriously, why hasn't he fired you and your self-entitled little ass? Yeah, but have you considered he's making me a dress for the gala? Waha! Very well, Miss Walters. What do you mean, very well? Why are you giving in to the whinings of a crying brat? But he says, look, if you want to keep your tailor, why don't you just try and make your tailor not go to court? You could settle beforehand. Just get him to give you a load of money. I'm sure he won't be annoyed at you then. <laughs> and no, looking like a PS2 character is not going to help you. But off she goes to the tailor. But she says, I've been retained by a client who was injured by one of your dysfunctional suits. And look, nothing's been filed, but if you give us a load of money, then we can stop going to court and everyone will be happy and you can just continue being my tailor. Just give me loads of money. This is a great deal. Can I me? That might be the first time anyone's responded to her in a reasonable manner. Excuse me, but who do you think you are talking to me in that manner, you crazy bint? Now, it's been a while since I played PS2 games, but I think that expression means oops. How dare you? I've never made a defective suit in all my life. And I for one believe him. Look at him. He looks incredibly professional. If I could only choose one person to help defend me in a zombie apocalypse, I'd be like, you look like the man I need on my side. My work is impeccable. It will be when it fits a woman. Don't look at me like that. That Batwoman trailer was funnier than this entire series. And Jen just proves she's got no people skills, just in case you didn't know that from the previous series. It's like, I'm not happy to be doing this. Look, just give me a load of money for absolutely no reason and I'll be on my way. I don't want to see you in court. This is just a job. It's just business. Now give me millions of pounds. But I'm sure you won't mind because I just don't want to do it. I'm not trusting you after you stabbed me in the back. Probably just a good advice if you don't trust her at all, to be honest. If I were you, I wouldn't touch her with a 10-foot barge pole you don't know where she's been. And I wouldn't touch with one either, because I do. Oh, well, there's no lawsuit yet. Oh, well, that's fine then. Look, just give me millions of pounds without a lawsuit. It's far better than going to court and give me millions of pounds. Seriously, I don't know what the problem is. I mean, I am suing you. I've just not filed the paperwork yet because I'm a lazy cow. How have you managed to make one of the most insufferable characters out of all of superherodom? You've literally got people who wanted to wipe out half the universe and She-Hulk's worse. And, and there won't be if you just take some responsibility for some of my clients' injuries. I've not sued you yet. Just do as I say, give in and give me everything I want. And then I won't sue you. Oh, I can't imagine why he doesn't want to be your friend. One day she's going to make someone an amazing wife. So she gives him this speech in the divorce court. But of course, the guy is justifiably pissed. I was like, yeah, you're not getting anything from me again and just starts destroying the dress he was making for her. Of course, I do think there's a problem with it when he does this. <laughs> Maybe something that easily torn apart isn't uh, suitable for a superhero. Oh, hey, I prepaid for that. Yeah, but the cost of destroying your dress is nothing compared to the cost you wanted him to pay you. You shouldn't have betrayed me, you greasy old buffalo. Hang on, you can't even see a face. Yeah, you greasy old buffalo. That is a face she's been pulling every night since about episode three at this point. Makes you twist a bit predictable when you just keep giving us faces like that. And she immediately turns, I'm gonna take you to court and take you for every penny you've got. I mean, I am the person that came here and was the aggressor, but you've torn apart my dress and that means war. Look, she's just a wonderful, nice human being. I can't imagine why everyone isn't more civil with it. I hope it's not down to wherever it is you get your ugly clothes from. It wasn't the best burn he's ever done, I've gotta be honest. See you in court. I'm sure I've seen that somewhere before. At this point, she's such a horrible human being. I think you can make a great argument that everyone just arraying themselves against her in her entire life is pure karma. Getting what you deserve. <laughs> oh, look, we're twinsies. Oh, it was about as coincidental as anything that happens in this show. But we jump to a courtroom. We have to do things fast in this show, otherwise Jen will start smelling of fish. What follows is extremely painful, but if we stick together, I think we can get through this. But like you, Taylor person, are you representing yourself? And he says, no, this entire charade was just an excuse to get Mac Murdock in to defend me. We couldn't think of a decent way to get him into the script, so we just made up an arbitrary situation and said he appeared for absolutely no reason whatsoever. One thing we all realized very slowly was that none of us are adept at writing. Oh boy, have you seen 
seen nothing yet. Representing himself. Start planning how you're gonna spend all your new money. Oh, I hope he spends it on Reddit so we can get another montage of man babies next week. That'll be fun. Mr. Jacobson. Of course I'm not representing myself, Your Honor. I'm not a fool. I mean, when you wear those glasses, it's always useful to reassure people of that just in case. Then where is your counsel? Well, where is his counsel indeed? Nobody saw this coming. This is a massive twist, just like the end of the episode, because at that moment, in walks Matt Murdock, everybody. In the distance, I can just hear her ovaries exploding, but he walks in and then everything gets painful. I'd like to dismiss the fact that she's asking for my client list for absolutely no reason whatsoever. It's not relevant. And she looks like, N no, it is relevant. No, it isn't. Your Honor, I believe this information to be incredibly relevant. That's because you're a moron who doesn't understand how anything works. I'm seeking damages for my individual clients and I want to see if anyone else has been injured. No, that's not how this works. Was he injured? That's the only thing that matters. He's injured, he gets damages. It doesn't really matter about anyone else. There could be multiple instances of clients sustaining injuries. And if those people sustained injuries, then they can sue separately. At this point, you're just touting for work. It's got nothing to do with your actual client, which is exactly what he said. Just because your legal argument fits worse than this t-shirt, don't come crying to me about it. But rather than saying that this court case is about one person, not multiple people, which would be the common sense argument, instead he goes, no, his record with customer satisfaction is spotless. And we soon find out in this show that She-Hulk not only does doesn't understand the law, but even basic human rights. If the defendant has nothing to hide, then why not hear from his clients? Oh, of course, because that's how that works. Look, if you're not committing crimes in your bedroom, then why wouldn't you allow the police to put microphones and CCTV cameras in it? It's almost like human beings have an inherent right to privacy to stop mad, crazy, raving, power-hungry cows coming in and infringing upon it. I would say that's a gross invasion of people's privacy. Yes, that's a gross invasion of people's privacy. Not that She-Hulk cares about that, because the only people she cares about are the ones she can try and cram up inside of a jar. It is material to the case whether this type of malfunction has affected other people. It's not material to this case at all. You're suing on behalf of one person with one suit. The only thing material to this case is, did his suit malfunction to this person, specifically? There is no inherent right to privacy. I mean, that's just a blatant lie. Article 8 of the Human Rights Act. Article 8 protects your right to respect your private life, your family life, your home, and your correspondence. Letters, telephone calls, and emails, for example. What is meant by private life? You have the right to live your life privately without government interference. It also means that personal information about you, including official records, photographs, letters, diaries, medical records, should be kept securely and not shared without your permission except in certain circumstances. And some random bint asking for him because she holds a grudge against a guy who tore a dress is not a good enough circumstance to go against basic human rights. And yes, this is American legal drama, but let's be honest, we all know the writers would support the right to privacy that the Supreme Court has actually drawn up in that case as well, due to what relied on it. And if I know that from over here, then why don't the writers? But Daredevil takes a different tack, and it's basically, wow, we'll all get in trouble if people find out our secret identities. I really don't think the law would care about that. That's not even based on any kind of legal precedent. You can't essentially just claim, no, please don't tell our moms, we'll get in trouble. And then she argues back, going on the basis of the fact that public figures mean that they don't have a right to privacy at all. And honestly, if anything in this entire scene is based off legal precedent, then I should be a lawyer because this thing looks like a piece of piss. But the judge agrees with Mr. Murdoch. Why? I don't think anyone knows. This doesn't need to be a legal court case at all. This was pure drivel, folks. But the guy's like, if I'm not going to get a new suit, then how am I supposed to do anything? Look at it. It's fried to a crisp. Mr. Patilio, what kind of fuel did you use in your boosters? I'm a greyhound. What kind of fuel did you use? Jet fuel. You used jet fuel in your boosters? Yeah, that's the story, folks. He used jet fuel and that was against the instructions. And so because that went against the manual of his super suit, his own negligence, not the manufacturer's, we essentially found out why McDonald's puts warning, contents may be hot on the side of their coffee cups. Because if you don't, some scrub's gonna throw it at someone and get sued. That's not what my instructions said. What? Why, when you're doing a court case, didn't you check if he was going against the manufacturer's instructions of the product? Jen isn't just incredibly annoying, but incredibly stupid. No, I didn't. He's lying. Yes, we can all tell he's lying, Mr. Murdoch. I'm pretty sure judges can't just say that, can they? Like, you've not even made a decision on something or seen all of the evidence, and you just go, he's lying, I can tell he's guilty, right at the start of the court case. He looks guilty, he's got a moustache. I don't know, maybe you'll just come across as prejudiced or something before you've actually made a decision. But he loses because he went against the instruction, but don't worry, because Jen has hasn't finished humiliating herself yet. Am I gonna go to jail? No, but I would like you to. Oh, she's just so professional, isn't she? I hope one day if I get in trouble, she can be my lawyer so I can go to prison when I'm innocent. And despite the fact that she's put someone through a very expensive, very stressful legal case, oh, don't worry, 
Jen has no shame or standards. And Luke, I just wanted to uh, apologize. Is there any way that we could go back to you being my tailor? No. You get what you deserve. Jen is literally the kind of person that would batter someone to within an inch of their lives and go, but I love you really. Can we still be friends? Because I hate you now. Surprising they put a representative for the audience in the show, isn't it? Potential thumbnail number three. <laughs> so having realized that she's terrible at life, terrible at friendships, terrible at relationships, and terrible at her job, Jen does what she always does when she needs to improve herself. Engages in alcoholism. Don't worry, I'm She-Hulk and that's why I got a green drink. What is it, apple sours? I've not had those in years. What's this? It's apple sours, love. It's from that guy over there. Honestly, if he's planning to come over and talk to you, he should have just drank it himself. Take the edge off. But of course, this show is the writer's personal blog and so it can only be Matt Murdock. I can understand the writers having a thing for Daredevil and Matt Murdock is blind, so that's something he can't really judge. In about five minutes though, after talking to it, he doesn't really have an excuse. An apple teeny, cute. That was the first thing she said and not, how did you know I was at the bar? How did a blind man spot me across the room before I saw him? No, none of this crossing your mind. Jen's thoughts going at a mile a century. Mind if I join you? I mean, if she doesn't, I do. Seriously, dude, you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Trust me, bros before rampant hall. Want to extend the peace offering? Ugh, hate it when people take the high road. Do you even know what the high road is? It must be quite difficult to see when you're just all the way down there on your knees. But if we want more evidence of how Shielk is the slowest person on earth, then oh boy, it's coming. She asked him what's he doing over here. You're from New York, why did you fly all the way over here to defend someone on a private liability case? Uh, Luke Jacobson made a couple of new suits for me. I owed him one. Doesn't really look like it. Oh, with chat up lines like that, I can't believe you're still single. She's like the living embodiment of femininity. Be still, my beating heart. It's a low blow insulting a blind man's clothes. <laughs> Is it? Would a blind man care? I mean, I don't care and I look like I've got dressed in the dark. It'd be like insulting the tennis skills of someone with no arms. They'd be like, well, duh. Well, I suppose they wouldn't do that. But the only person that looks stupid in that scenario is the person making the comment. <laughs> but she says, oh yeah, you've got your own practice, right? She's like, oh, Miss Walters, have you been checking up on me? Then we get this little beauty. Came out of nowhere and you made my dumb client admit to being even dumber than I thought he was. <laughs> no, that's not what happened. You took on a case without doing your due diligence and you didn't have a defense that was even worthy of basic scrutiny. That's all on you. You're the lawyer. You're the person that took on the case. It was your argument that got him in trouble. If your client doesn't have a strong enough case to take to court, then you shouldn't be taking it to court for them. You should have advised him not to do it. But you didn't advise him that because you thought he did. Why? because you were too stupid to even work out the basic fundamentals of your own case. No one is to blame in this situation except She-Hulk. Of course, accountability and responsibility, not really her strong point, is it? How did you know about the jet fuel? Did you not get the hint from his... It was really subtle. I can understand why you missed it. A hunch. And a massive nose. What is his deal, by the way? It rhymes with rich parents. <laughs> what rhymes with raving narcissist where nothing's ever her fault? Is there something for that? I don't know. I'm sad and lonely. But he explains further that most of my work is actually pro bono in Hell's Kitchen, and so occasionally we take on a big name client, something to pay the bills, and that's why I'm here. He's got everything going for him. He's professional with a good job, but still has the skills and intelligence to make a lot of money in a high status job as it is. At this point, she's just walking around leaving a snail trail behind her. As someone who works for them, I really don't have any gas in the tank for anything else. I can understand why you're so happy and fulfilled in life. I'm just so busy with my full-time career that I just don't have time for anything else as I work for all these people I can't stand. Yes, Jen, I can understand why then the opportunity to improve your life occurred. You just ran back to your miserable hellhole. I can't imagine why people don't stick around for more than one day with you. Well, you say that, but I think you're in a unique position to do some real good. And that, dear fellows, is all it takes. Just a little head turn. It's like you'd offered her half a plate of chips. Just massage that ego a little bit, give her a bit of attention, and that's all she needs. She's yours. But I think you can do some real good. You can be Jen and defend them in the courtroom. And if justice fails, then you can use She-Hulk to engage in the other half of justice outside of the courtroom. I mean, the main problem there is that she's also She-Hulk in the courtroom. But we can let him off that. He's blind. Jen Walters can use the law to help people when society fails. And She-Hulk can help people when the law fails. Oh my god, you call me amazing. Can I get another stool, please? Someone seems to have spilt a drink on this one. And if you choose, be the best of both worlds. I don't think you even know what two different worlds are. But with that, he gets a call and he has to leave. Of course, that doesn't stop her checking him out. I mean, he did massage her ego for three seconds and boy, is she a difficult one to please. An incredibly difficult one to please. We're all feeling this, right? It's not just me. No, it's just you. We have somehow managed to lower the standards from actually getting bought chips 
to, you're a lawyer. Oh my, he told me what my job was. How can I resist? But at this point, Todd texts her as well. I have a legal issue I'd like to discuss immediately. No, I promise you, this is just a coincidence and I'm not trying to distract you from anything in this very obvious manner. That's the most annoying part about this show, that I saw it happening weeks ago. But when you do base your plot around all men are evil, it makes it very easy to spot who the villains are, even if they happen to appear like good guys for a week. Hey, do you want another round? I need the alcohol to come over my own sense of self-revulsion. Have I ever told you about how every morning I feel this 12-hour sense of ick afterwards? It's really attractive. But with that, he makes his excuses and leaves. Something's come up with work, and we find out that the writers have actually had this thing for Daredevil all along. Yep. Um, I, uh, it was really not... Oh, look, he's so confident. He's confident enough to approach her and talk to her, but he's also so insecure that he can let us lead and he's easily dominated. Seriously, it's Josh all over again. This man doesn't exist. If only he could be a strong leader and incredibly insecure, he'll be my perfect man. But she gets text again by Todd and, oh, we promise this isn't a distraction for whatever that guy's doing over there. So she goes and meets him at a restaurant. But of course, the joke here is that he's interested in her and she isn't interested in him. And he's using his leverage over her as a business partner in order to actually to invite her to a meal that she doesn't want to go to. And please don't realize that this is a supposed twist and it's all a distraction. Please. Of course, the writers go to their happy place. An authentic Wakandan war spear. Because for people who don't like stereotypes, they're incredibly predictable. So I, of course, in the auction, a milli. Yeah, that's how people speak. Oh, just a cool milli. Yeah, it was a milli. Yeah, everyone uses the word milli all the time, especially rich people. How much is your mansion? Well, it's 7.5 millis. Have you had any social interaction at all? I mean, I mean that seriously, writers. Like, have you ever actually communicated with another human being? I'm really curious. I mean, she gives him that look as if he's weird, but the writers are the people who think people actually talk like this in the first place. <coughs> a million. Yeah, thanks, dude. No one got that at home. Maybe you could say it louder for the writers writer at the back. Dollars. I got comedy. If you get a season two, can you put in the subtitles where we're supposed to laugh and clap, please? Because seriously, I'm in trouble. I mean, if this is a sitcom, so's the green mile. So he shows her a picture of how they think that guys take photographs. Because if you don't constantly train down the gym, then everyone takes photos with their top off. I'm actually wondering if California is living in its own reality at this point, because so there's, there's some kind of disconnect in humanity between us, I promise. I love Wakanda. You know, I actually studied- What? No, seriously, what? What's wrong with him saying he loves Wakanda? Wakanda. Why is that a problem? Are you implying that he shouldn't love Wakanda? Is the reason that you didn't expand upon your opinion in this scene because you know it would get you in trouble? The truth would out. Interesting that you decided to use this as a fourth wall break, isn't it? Wakanda forever! Ooh, that makes me uncomfortable. Why? Why do Wakandan cultural practices make you uncomfortable? Why do Wakandan people make you uncomfortable? The She-Hulk outs herself as a bigot episode, everybody. <laughs> no, I'm just really progressive. Don't say that. Don't do that. I don't want that culture near me. I don't know. You just seem a bit prejudiced to me for a jolly green giant. Apparently it was stolen by colonizers, but whatever. Oh, please, just smash me in the face with that sledgehammer a bit more, please. Have you even seen the Wakandan movie? I like, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. How dare you like something from another nation, you peasant? She might actually be one of the most repulsive people on Earth. I, I think we've got a contestant for it. No wonder her cousin pissed off to another planet the moment he met her in the first episode. But apparently with that, it's a step too far. So she slams the table into his chest as Hulk, so he's dead, and walks off. Oh, and I'm billing you for the whole hour. That's right, love. At the rate you were giving it away for free, you might as well get paid. So she ends up back home and collapses on the couch because she's exhausted. She's had a hard day of being crap at everything. It's not over yet, though. That's it. Leapfrog's calling her. He's desperate. You're a superhero. Surely you can come and help me. I, mean, I think I'm being attacked. He's screaming. He's driving and he's being attacked. This is desperate. Legally or physically? Definitely physically. He's being physically attacked. He's in serious trouble here. We better get out there as soon as possible. We're a superhero. I'm gonna try to lose him in this parking lot. Oh, you're close. Gonna... He's being physically attacked. He's close and she's a superhero. Quick, run out the door. Yes, she's heading to him. This is gonna be great. She'll definitely arrive on time. Be in the middle. Wait, why did you stop? Did you not hear him? He's getting attacked. He's desperate. Why have you stopped? Why are you still standing there? Oh, that's right. I've got to get dressed in my suit first. I swear if I hadn't seen it myself, I wouldn't believe it. 
She's literally got a guy getting violently assaulted near her house and she's like, I'll come and save you. Just after I change my clothes, I've got to look nice for this. Uh, come on. She-Hulk is a super villain. Yeah, I'll come and save you, but first I've got to look gorgeous. So somehow, despite the fact that he was just driving into the car park as she decided to get dressed, as soon as he reaches the top of the car park, she's already there. So he sees her and breaks. She decides to break for him with her shin and projectile fires Daredevil across the sky. We reveal him in his new suit, which looks nowhere near as good as his old one. You need to back off. And waste this outfit? What, because you've never worn a t-shirt and shorts before? Remember, she needed a superhero tailor to make her that. I can understand why you pay him the big bucks. So she tells Eugene to get out of here, after which we get this incredible line. Dope super suit! Yeah, dope super suit. I've never seen a t-shirt and shorts before. And of course they fight. Daredevil jumps around all over the place and she manages to absolutely not hit him at all. We get the quality of lines that you would expect from a She-Hulk writer. No! I'm gonna whoop your ass. Now I'm going to whoop your ass. Because She-Hulk is a teenager from the 1990s. But she smashes the ground, absolutely destroys the entire parking lot, but luckily escapes anyway. My uh, ass remains unwhooped. Take you all day to think of that one, did it? Also, I don't know why you're grinning with that. After that line, you should just be ashamed. But she chases him and he jumps down the building. Not that it helps when she catches him at the bottom. Where are you going? We're not done. They dodge about a bit more and he's still trying to catch the car that's escaping. Because unlike her, he's actually a good guy. She decides to pick up somebody else's random car that happens to be next to her and yeet it at him. Yeah, it doesn't matter if he dies, it's fine. Because she's a superhero, remember? Licensed to cause millions in property damage for absolutely no reason whatsoever. If you can jump to the top of a parking lot, why couldn't you just catch him up? But her throwing the car does mean that he loses the guy that he was chasing. And that guy's the villain. What? what? But She-Hulk finds Daredevil's weakness. All his powers are done by his hearing, so Thunderclap is going to be very painful. <laughs> Flying face first into a car isn't going to help either, really. Of course, her first thought is to just grab him and take his mask off, revealing his identity. And if everyone's identity was this easy to discover, then I don't think they'd remain secret for very long. Matt, do you pretend to be blind, man? Because that is really oh, problematic. Oh, no. You've just tried to kill a guy and then thrown a car at him, and your biggest problem is, do you pretend to be blind? Because that would be a problem. Oh, are you good evil? Why are you chasing that man? Why are you trying to throw him off a building all of these would have been good questions so can you actually see it's so great to see you got a priorities right i'm blind i'm blind relax yeah you, that's what you should relax about she just smashed you into a car mate why are you not more concerned i have a special method that i use to uh, see yeah that sounds like the technical description of his superpowers I've got a spatial method. I hope you keep it up with the complex plot. Oh, like echolocation. That's right. They just got Jen to explain his own superpowers to him in a far more technical manner. Uh, I basically have really good hearing, or at least <laughs> I did. You see, a nice person would have taken that as a hint that you've just damaged my hearing, you crazy bint. But of course, it's not like Jen cares about anyone but herself or the permanent damage that she may have just done to a superhero. Wait, why were you attacking my client? Yeah, because that's what matters. The fact that he's attacking your client, not the fact that your client might be evil. Frog is the bad guy here. He kidnapped that Luke Jacobson, he's holding him hostage. Why didn't you tell me that before we fought? Uh, Why was your first instinct to stick your shin into a car, damage the car permanently, and make a guy almost fly off a roof? Why'd you just jump into fights without knowing any of the information? Why do you still think you're a good guy? All of these are decent questions. Uh, why didn't you ask me before immediately trying to whoop my ass? I I'm sorry. Can we stop saying whooping people's ass, please? Feels like I've traveled back to Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. But I assume the guy dressed as the devil was the bad yeah, one. That's a fair point. No, it isn't. Could you imagine what she's like on Halloween? Oh, look, there's that small thing over there walking down the street as a ghost. Better punch that into next year. Ah, why have you killed my child? Oh, no, Sharon. <laughs> but she was dressed as a mythical ghost. How was I not supposed to think she was a supervillain? Your logic is impeccable. I'm surprised you don't have a much happier life. But of course, she was willing to jump his bones before, so imagine what she's like now. So, are you like a superhero? Yeah, she never wanted to be a superhero, but when she finds out that he is, whew, all I'm saying is she's lucky a super suit is extra absorbent. Like the gold devil. Daredevil. That was also the writer's response when someone said, you've got Daredevil coming in your show. Who's that? Is he one of the ones from Marvel or DC? Can we get Superman? Do you think there's a chance we could get Superman in the show? You know, I've always really liked Harley Quinn. I think she's a strong, empowered woman. Do you think we can get her in episode nine? Well, it is very daring to use ketchup and mustard as your color scheme. You wore polka dots to a wedding. All I'm saying is maybe don't judge if you don't have better fashion sense than a blind man. How about I tell Luke you said that? No, no, please don't. I'm not sure that matters anyway. He's already pissed off with her. After all, he has met her. Perfectly understandable. But they decide to go off and save the clients from the clients. Off they go to the lily pad secret base of the frog. 
This guy has come up with the master plan of kidnapping a tailor to make him make a suit. I mean, seriously, you can get some excellent deals online. This can't be the only guy in the world that can actually make a suit. Fancy AI with a British voice that talks to you. Hello. You probably shouldn't be doing this course of action because you're an absolute scrub. I think I'd make a great AI. Seriously, I don't know what you and your chavvy little friends are doing out here, but you should probably stop it. I don't know who told you that you could pull off this color, but shoot them. Mate, I feel the same way about your glasses. All I'm saying is glass houses shouldn't throw stones, you know? I know you're just being mean because I kidnapped you, but words hurt, man. I remember when kids used to be taught that sticks and stones would break my bones, but names would never hurt me. I mean, being brought up under that kind of life advice comes in really useful when you do YouTube or basically anything on Earth. I have no idea why we stopped teaching kids that and then started talking to them, why don't you just break it the first sign of trouble? Someone said a naughty name to you. <laughs> How fragile are these writers? Oh, please don't say that you can't see just to protect your superhero identity. That would be a problem. Clark Kent pretending he's partially sighted to protect Superman. What a bigot. Look, eight episodes into the show, maybe it's finally getting to me, who knows? But they've arrived staring through the window. They'd start debating the difference between henchmen and goons. The writers think they're being really clever, but actually it's got to be in that list of the top 10 things nobody's ever given a crap about. Goons and henchmen are two completely different animals. The henchmen believe in the cause, goons are just there for the paycheck. He's definitely a lawyer, but he says there's 25 goons in the building. You stay here, I'm gonna take the 10 out. I know there's 25 because I can hear their heartbeats. You can hear their heartbeats? Come on, that's a little far-fetched. And then he just looks at her. I can hear yours too. We get this response back. She normally reserves that look for a tub of Ben and Jerry's. Your heart's beating pretty fast. What? No, it's not. What? What? No, it's not. Sorry, my ultra absorbent suit made me forget that I'm just a rampant whore. He just looked at you, dude. Calm down. You're worse than a teenage boy. Take me 15 seconds to take out each one. You just wait here until I've gotten all 10. I'm not going to sit here for half an hour. While That's not how that math works. I no, it really isn't. It's not even difficult maths. It's for a minute, two and a half minutes. I'm not going to sit here for half an hour. Have you considered just pissing off home then? Because it would make my job a lot easier. And I think everybody watching She-Hulk would be a lot happier if you weren't in it. How about I just smash away in? Because they're holding a hostage and they'll just shoot him in the face. You're supposed to be a lawyer. Do you actually have a brain cell in some part of your body? Because I know you really appreciate clothes and all that kind of stuff, but have you ever actually tried thinking about a problem for once in your life? Maybe if instead of worrying about how your hair changes when you grow a superpower, you could turn into the scarecrow and try and grow a brain. Because they have weapons, Jennifer. Thank you. At least we finally put someone in this show that will actually tell her what a moron she is until later on when he, they destroy him entirely. Good thing She-Hulk is indestructible. Yes, but the tailor isn't. Think of somebody but yourself for once in your sad little life. You're supposed to be a superhero. Yes, well, everyone else might die, but I'll survive. Still the way to go, okay? I don't know why he's not mentioning the hostage that is about to get shot in the face if she goes in there. I've done this a million times. Just remind me again how many times you've broken into a warehouse. Remind me again who has the superpowers here? Uh, that would be both of you, unless you're under the impression that all blind people can actually see by sound that bounces off the walls. <laughs> Seriously, she's so stupid, she might. Oh, I'm pointing at myself. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, believe me, we all know. The only thing she ever cares about is herself. Of course, she's not talking about anyone else. The one time she considered another person, hell froze over and we ended up with Slough. And I will do my thing. You don't have a thing. You don't ever do this. He's right, you know. You chose not to do this. You just wanted to be a lawyer and miserable and basically try it on with every single person on earth. Just because you've had more men go through you than the channel tunnel doesn't mean that you know how to be a superhero. It's not as if you absorb any of their intelligence as you go through them because otherwise we wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. So he goes off to fight the people, leaving her on the roof. Okay, I guess that's pretty cool. Well, at least she found something to compliment in somebody. So these are the goons which are going around protecting a tailor. No, this is the story, I promise. And they're carrying crossbows. Why? Nobody knows. If any of them had a gun, this would all be over. Because three of them are guarding a tunnel. Bearing in mind that's a solid ceiling above them because you can see it is. One of them gets hit in the face and collapses. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That's still a solid ceiling above them. And this guy is staring forwards. Something drops from the sky and he goes, <gasps> what's down there? He is using a crossbow though in a land of guns. So, you know, speaks for itself. But then this door opens and a guy gets thrown through it because as Daredevil said, he wants to do this stealthily, which is how this happened. Stealth's the way to go, okay? Trust me, I've done this a million times. Trust him, he's done it a million times. <laughs> Nailed that one, mate. Now, at this point, if any of them had guns, like he said they did, instead of crossbows, then all of this would be over. Because he just walks out in front of them and would get shot in the face. And even if he didn't, then the noise would alert everybody else in the room and his whole idea of stealth would go out the window. But no, these have crossbows for some reason, so, you know... Turn your brain off, don't think it'll be fine. So they all have a fight and he beats them all. One of them manages to get a radio off and another team come in. They've got more crossbows and not guns. These goons have the IQ of a spoon. But then as they're walking towards him slowly down the corridor, 
shield powers through the ceiling on top of them all. So they're all dead then. You literally got crushed by She-Hulk who had enough force to smash through a concrete roof and drop concrete blocks on you. Definitely dead then. What a superhero, Jen. What a superhero. She-Hulk smash. She-Hulk murders people. Also, She-Hulk's been smashing everybody. You smashing five men at the same time isn't a surprise. If anything, I'm surprised it didn't happen earlier. You literally got him to facepalm in your own show. That's how bad you realize this is. I mean, hell, if you'd done it in a show that anyone respected, it may have become the new Picard meme. Unfortunately, there's only about four of us that watch this thing, but everyone hears the fight. She-Hulk decides to smash open a wall rather than just go through a door. Don't know why. They've only got crossbows, love. You're immune, remember? And it's not as if you're concerned about them shooting the hostage for some reason, which I still haven't worked out why. So they start taking out the goons, and she Hulk, rather than helping out Daredevil on the master villain's crime, decides that she's still going to be his lawyer, despite the fact that she's literally caught him in the act of committing a crime. That's that strong ethical code that she's got in action, I can see. She goes to free the tailor, who's tied up with rock climbing rope around his stomach, and she thinks the best way to free him from this is to grab it and pull. Well, he's dead, then you've just ripped him in half. You've just killed the tailor. Do you have any idea how strong that synthetic rope is? If you had that much rope and pulled, it would go through you. You've just cut him in half. Oh no, he's fine, even though that would be the most ridiculous part of the entire show. Don't you yell at me. I'm already very stressed out. And you're only a torso at this point, dude. I'd be stressed out as well. But she's like, you need to stop before you rack up more serious charges. We can we can try and plead insanity. Why are you trying to let your supervillain get off the hook? Could say this is an episode of Mania. We could just make it up, yes. We could say it's an episode of Mania. I mean, we all know it isn't. We all know it isn't. But I could lie for you. I could lie for you and get you off. Because she's a really nice person. Sanity is murky, but it's not a bad strategy. That's right. That's Daredevil over there giving legal advice as he's beating up the goons. Look, I know she discovered your secret identity in three seconds, but don't you think you might want to try and conceal it from the evil people? Traumatic expression, dude. Undiagnosed PTSD. So the devil ninja guy, he, he's a lawyer? Oh look, he's worked out your secret identity. Thank you. Congratulations. You're so smart. You're all so smart. And one thing we realized very slowly was that none of us are adept at writing anything at all. I'm just a big fan of legal dramas. Yeah, I think he'll swallow that one. Definitely thrown him off the trail. He knows your voice, your location, and that you're a lawyer. How long do you think it would take him to track down your actual identity? This guy's really kind of doing it for me. The most stupid thing he's done the entire episode is what did it for you, was it? Yes, I love my men to be a bit moronic. It just makes them really easily dominated. <laughs> But the frog decides he's going to escape out the window and breaks his legs. The tailor decides to forgive her despite the fact that she tried to tear him in half with some rope and agrees to go and make her dress after all. You'll make my gala dress? Yes, of course. I'm not a monster. Yeah, but she is. So have you considered like the ethical implications of making clothes for a monster? I'm trying not to get too bloated between now and then. Are you kidding? Have you seen her alcohol consumption? That's like a daily intake of calories right there. <laughs> Why do men always have to be a downer on things? Yeah, because if it's everyone that ever talks to you and you're the factor that links everyone together, it's definitely not your fault, love, is it? Great to be strained professional acquaintances again. That's how I feel at the start of every video. But of course, she goes and hunts down Daredevil because, you know, needs some chips. It's been half an hour <laughs> picking off each goon. Look, just because you can't do maths, repeating it twice isn't going to make you any better. You were the woman who caused excessive property damage. And she murdered five people by dropping a concrete roof on them. Are we just going to skip over the brutal slaughter of people for no reason, are we? I mean... When do you head to New York? Jumping straight in at the deep end. Oh, he's leaving quick! The channel total! Tomorrow. Oh. oh, no, he's leaving tomorrow. I mean, he doesn't even have time to throw a hot dog. Hey, maybe next time I'm in town, I can take you out to dinner. See, next time I'm in town, because you don't know me. I've known you for about 45 seconds in the grand total of things. It would be stupid to do anything else, but maybe next time I can get to know you for a bit first. We can go out for a meal. We could spend more than 12 seconds in each other's lives. I might even buy you a plate of chips, if you're lucky. Yeah, or maybe we could skip all of that and just... Oh no, there's no need for that. Why would we spend any time getting to know each other at all? Don't worry, the channel tunnel's massive. There's plenty of room. So I'd say she scratched another notch in a bed post, but that was several beds ago. And at the rate she goes through them, she just simply can't afford to keep by them at this kind of speed. She just doesn't have the money for that tradition. Although I do wonder why no one ever asks about the massive pile of splinters in the corner of the room. Oh, don't worry about this. This is them just making Daredevil do the walk of shame. And it's called the walk of shame because it's supposed to be shameful behavior. Except in She-Hulk, where it's deemed to be a great way to live your life, folks. Yes, that must be why Jen's so happy and satisfied with her life. But if you want something that's incredibly self-aware, then this is it. It's astonishing, to be honest. It's weird you guys are still here. Yeah, that's the way I was feeling. Half the episodes were over by this point. Doesn't it feel like this episode should be over? I thought that 30 seconds into the show, so I may not be the fairest of judges. Hello? Uh, 
Why are random people allowed to just storm into our apartment without keys? I thought that you might be dead or something. I had to break and enter- Break and enter into a lawyer's house? How did you even do that? Did you break the lock? A window? A door? How much damage have you caused? What even is this line? Or is it just because you couldn't work out another way for her to get through the door? Like, I don't know, knocking. There's some guy outside dressed in a devil costume and he's doing the walk of shame because- Because it's shameful behavior. Oh yeah, that was with me. It was, it was. I don't know why when you didn't realize there was just a random man doing the walk of shame down the street, you didn't just assume it was me because Everybody else does. If there's anyone on this continent up and about by 5 a.m., we all know who's to blame. Oh, you did. I don't believe you don't already know. You are a best friend. There's absolutely no way you didn't see a man in a weird costume walking down the street and going, oh, she's been busy again. Happy? Oh, we're happy. Why are you happy this time, but you were so upset before? What happened to the 12 hours of ick? You know, your natural disgust and repulsion mechanism. We just pushed through that this series, did we, by sheer determination. Seriously, what is this scene? I don't know. I have no idea. Please, someone explain it to me. I feel like I'm going insane, but apparently the show realizes this as well. Do you think they were just going through the script and they're like, this is awful. What am I even doing with my life? But they wrote it down on the script and someone decided to read it out because they didn't know the difference of the person losing their mind. What's the next line? What is even the point of any of this? Why do I even try? I'm crap. I don't know. It's a 50-50 chance, folks. This episode already came to a very satisfying conclusion. You're gonna have to define satisfying because you still haven't been subject to justice for all of the evil actions that you've done throughout this entire show. Like murdering five people as you came through a roof. Trust me. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that you're just talking about you being a rampant whore. Come on. We gotta go, you can tell me about it later. Why would you want her to tell you about it? I don't even want her to tell me about it, and that's the entire point of the show. Yep, and where is the gown from Luke? Oh, for the gala? Where did you think you were going? Also, this is the next morning. He was only going to start making you the dress last night, and it's supposed to be ready now? Does he have a time travel machine? I mean, none of this makes any sense. Wait, we're doing the gala? That doesn't feel right. No. The timeline doesn't match up at all. In fact, it seems like all of this is an absolute farce and we should have just ended the episode when we were ahead. Is next episode the finale? I mean, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on which side of the fence you're coming at it from, I'm still hoping for a season two, personally. I'm She-Hulk's biggest fan. Although, to be fair, I might be the only one left. Get tacked on set piece near the end of the season? That is what it sounds like. That you've just tacked this on for absolutely no reason, even though everyone will have predicted it episodes before like I did. This is the big twist, isn't it? Yeah, this is the big twist that absolutely everybody will have seen coming because we know full well that anyone that has dangly bits is inevitably evil. Honestly, it's your own bigotry that makes the show incredibly predictable and boring. Question is, ooh, there's another Hulk, but this one's red or like, I'm getting fridge. I mean, we can kind of hope for the latter. That way it could give Daredevil some motivation and he can come back and be the main character. We gotta make it look amazing. Was that meant to be the Wolverine with makeup brushes? Give Marvel a few years, they'll probably do it themselves. Whatever, I'm game. So She-Hulk arrives and it's the trailer footage. Yes, we're still doing the trailers when we're in episode eight. Her parents start telling her that she might be cold and needs a jacket. Two Hulks in the family still doesn't understand how any of it works. Suppose when it comes to IQ, apples don't fall far from the tree. She-Hulk waves across at the gala to her boss. And of course the person moves and so she ends up waving at this guy. Yes, they're together. What a coincidence. I'm sure nobody sees this twist coming and hasn't for weeks. It's the female lawyer of the year awards and doing everything regular lawyers do except backwards i mean that's a pretty good description of jen to be honest she tries to do everything that lawyers do except get all of it wrong it's actually wonderfully accurate so he reads out female lawyer of the year and it's jen oh it's so happy oh we're so grateful Except then he reads out everybody else's name as well. Basically every female lawyer. Literally all of them. It's almost like when you get hired for your physical characteristics rather than off merit the rewards you get for the job just don't feel very rewarding. People don't like being rewarded for things that they didn't earn. It makes them feel horrible. It's actually a disgusting thing to do. So maybe we should just hire off merit again? I don't know. I kind of think that's not what the show's trying to say, though. Now tell us, what's it like being a female lawyer? Twice the work, half the recognition, and being asked what it's like being a female lawyer. That's because that's why you were hired. They've got nothing else to ask you. If this is how you feel, why don't you ask to get hired on merit? And if you're not hired on merit, then you won't get the recognition that you would get on merit because everybody knows that you didn't earn your position or deserve to be there in the first place. Are you going to push for people to get hired on merit? No, 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 nothing, no. <laughs> Oh, we're clicking. We're clicking. We're clicking instead of clapping. We now don't clap into a microphone because it gives you terrible audio. I don't clap in real life because people might get anxious around me. Which to be fair is an incredible attitude to have in real life. It's one that definitely deserves a round of applause. But she starts thanking her parents and her friends. But then it all goes down. Hulk King is back everybody and he's taken over the stage. How does he do that? 
Did he hack in, or did he have people on the inside that were working with him all along at her career? I don't know, it's a mystery to me, and definitely not something I didn't see weeks ago. Do you want to see who She-Hulk really is? This is the truth. We reveal what She-Hulk really is. Does not deserve your attention. She-Hulk is desperate for attention. I think we could all agree on that one. She does not deserve the power she stole from the Hulk. Oh my God. That doesn't make any sense. Nobody thinks she stole power from the Hulk. That's literally no one's argument. Why did you write a TV series where the villains of the piece don't even make any sense? It's a bit stupid. I think I answered my own question there. Can She's somebody cut this off? Yes, superhero. That's true. She is not a superhero. She doesn't want to be a superhero. She's not good enough to be a superhero. And she doesn't care about anybody else, which is like the fundamental principle of being a superhero is you actually have to think of somebody else other than yourself for at least a split second of your life, which is definitely beyond She-Hulk. So uh, at least they're right about that bit. <laughs> okay, they're right about two things. They must've been watching the series. But of course we got both of these people looking entirely confused. I don't know what's going on. It's definitely nothing to do with me, I promise. And then the inevitable happened. Quite frankly, it's amazing it's not happened before. Just from sheer odds, because no matter how rare this is, if you've been with a few billion people, that's quite a few spins of the roulette wheel. Yes, it's a tape of her activities has come out, presumably with Hulk King, and that is her father, who looks like he's just died, presumably of shame, which I think she's immune to after doing the walk of shame so many times. And she's like, oh no, they actually know the truth about me. I'm getting so angry that now everybody else knows what I've been up to. She's so angry. How can everybody have found out about who I am? and what I do. So she smashes the screen down and absolutely loses it like, I don't know, the Hulk? Do you remember when she said she was far better at controlling her emotions? Yep. Turns out the only thing that was actually required to make a loser temper was to reveal to the world what she was and what she'd done. We have found She-Hulk's kryptonite. The truth. The only thing that can bring her down. Accountability. <laughs> her biggest nightmare. Responsibility. <laughs> For some reason, they've got like red flashing emergency lights. Don't know why they've got that at a gala. And they're like, oh yeah, we found them. Look at all those people. I can't tell who they are. Looks like the last time any of them ate a steak, Vietnam was still going on. But she is angry. How dare you reveal the truth of what I am? <laughs> so she chases them, smashes through a wall, even though there's a perfectly good door right there. Don't know why. Grabs one of them and starts screaming into his face. Have you got half a bag of chips, mate? <laughs> There's people with guns waiting outside because, you know, everyone knew this was going to happen. And she reveals to the world the truth, which will no doubt be what next episode is all about. Oh no, please feel sorry for me, despite the fact that everyone found out what I was doing all this time. And it turns out, yeah, I was probably right all along. What a twist, eh? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I worked this out weeks ago, love. So there you have it. The biggest She-Hulk twist in all of history. Someone calling her a slut. I don't know why that's meant to be a twist. We've known that for weeks, mate. But... As far as the rest of it is, I've known that for weeks as well. I long had a theory since she started meeting people that all of the nice people in her life were always after something. They just wanted things from her. They were part of the group trying to get things from her, get close to her, find out her weaknesses. Why did I think this? It's very simple. They had dangly bits, which means they can't be good. The writer's own prejudice made the story predictable. It was easy to see who the villains were. And my theory from the start was that Abomination led it. And last week kind of confirmed it to me, especially when he was given a cards about the gang. You had the previously on bits that remind you of everyone you meet is just a life lesson. You know, what is that life lesson? that you shouldn't trust men because men will destroy your life. Yeah, She-Hulk isn't only not subtle in their messaging, but their messaging is actively repulsive. A lot like the character of She-Hulk herself. And so if Abomination was in charge, there's only one plan they could really do to harm her in some way. Make her not be a lawyer, because being a lawyer is the only thing she's ever wanted since the start of the series, apparently despite the fact that she's incredibly miserable all the time. And so that's what I think all of this was. It was simply character assassination. Despite the fact that men are supposed to do it, which isn't how men do things at all. No, character assassination is definitely more a tool used by the fairer sex. But then again, they're the ones that wrote the script. So it's not unusual that they would project themselves onto men. And so with that, you come to a point, as this is their personal blog, and they're just projecting their own behavior onto the villains of the piece. Are they really actually angry at men? Or is it simply that they're unhappy with themselves, their own lives, and stop blaming everyone else for it? I'll leave that one in your hands. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.